And we are recording and um, uh, welcome. And I'm super excited for my um, guest on, uh, on the interview today, um, Daniela Rossi. And, uh, but, but, but Daniela always says, don't, um, don't call me Daniela, call me Danny. Um, it, it, um, is that right? And did I pronounce your name right? Or, or, or kind, of kind of even close? Actually, I say, <laughs> uh, close, close. I do say, but you can call me Danny. I know my name's very difficult to say, even for fluent people. So uh, yeah, it's an Italian name. Uh, it's, it's Daniel for boys in uh, Italian. And yeah, so living here in Canada, always a source of confusion. So, so Danny and, is and fine. You, are, are you originally Italian? Because I noticed on your podcast that you say um, uh, your, your name, Daniela, with a uh, with a very um, Italian accent. Yeah, uh, well, born here in Canada, but my parents were born in in Italy, so I think I picked up their accent. <laughs> cool and. Um, and so, so, so Daniela is a, uh, is the host of the Stuttering is Cool podcast and you, and you now have hundreds of episodes. I think you're on episode like 262 or 260 something. Um, yeah. Right something like that. Yeah. I lost track. <laughs> but just a whole, uh, a whole bunch of, of podcasts and they're really, really interesting and really, um, and really, and really cool. Um, could, um, could you give like a, a brief introduction about your po your podcast, how you started and, and kind of what sure. it's about. Yeah. So first of all, thank you for the compliments on my show. Uh, something that I started way back in 2007, uh, the end of 2007. So um, when you say, you know, I have a lot of podcasts, he's at 250, 60. I go, yeah, but since 2000, it's not that many episodes. <laughs> But but in any case, I started it back then because um, I was at um, um, and and I noticed because um, you usually do two a month. And so I was doing the math and I was like, um, is this is this guy like 70 years old? Um, <laughs> um, but, yeah, um, but yeah, so, um, so, so, you, yeah. so you did a whole um, you, you used to do like weekly or something. And now you change. I used to. Yeah, I used to do weekly and then it was twice every two weeks. And then, you know, as life gets more busy, busy, busy. So uh, it's, I've reached to a point at like once a month, once every two months, and then back to two weeks, then back to this. So whenever I'm able to put out an uh, episode, uh, I'm usually around, if I don't have an episode out around the month and a half mark, I really start to feel it. It's like something's missing. I got to do, I got to do something, right? So um which is happening now. I think my last episode was was last month, this time last month. So I'm itching to put out another one. Um, and uh, yeah, so I started my podcast back in 2007 when Facebook was brand new to the world. Uh, so imagine a world where not everybody used Facebook and not everybody used Twitter. Twitter just came to be. Uh, MySpace was all the rage. And you know, meeting someone else who stuttered was extremely rare, or it was just starting to get less rare because people were meeting online through, you know, a handful of online forums. Uh, you would actually go to a website, you know, it's say name of stuttering forum .com, you know, um, and so at that time, we'll say 2006, around that time, I started thinking to myself, you know, I need to find a new job, but and I started to worry about stuttering with a job interview. I kept, you know, I was shopping around for an SLP. Something kept stopping me from getting speech therapy again, because uh, I had it in the uh, 80s. So long story short, by 2007, the summer of 2007, I started, no, after, ha sorry, let me back up a bit. After having, you know, signed up for Facebook, I started to meet others who stutter, but it was all like a negative, like negative stuttering experiences. Even you know, there were probably maybe five groups about stuttering on Facebook at the time. And you know, there was a group called I Hate Stuttering. That's how, you know, um, I mean, I don't want to use the word negative actually, because it's actually people's feelings, right? I, I hate my stuttering. How do I stop stuttering and all that stuff? But I was in my mid thirties, I guess, at the time not 70. <laughs> uh, and, um, you know, 
And I knew how much, I've already experienced how much um, trying to pass off as fluent didn't really help me. And I'm like, I feel a disconnect <laughs> with everybody. Then came a group called Stuttering is Cool. And I thought, now here's something different. <laughs> and then I would hear, and then, but every so often I would do a search online for stuttering, a lot of scientific stuff. I know I'm rambling, so I'm gonna cut this short. Long story short, I started learning well, and, about- uh, And actually I'm, um, since I have cluttering, then uh, then, then you actually can't out ramble me. So, um, so, so don't, <laughs> um, don't worry about rambling at all. Um, um, oh, okay, good. <laughs> uh, shoot, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Uh, oh, yes. No, it's gone. What was I talking about again? Oh, yes. Uh, I started learning things like stuttering support groups, having friends that you stutter, uh, going to shopping malls with your friends who stutter to practice things called speech tools and making jokes about each other's stuttering, playing, playing practical jokes on each other so that you get stuck in a stuttering situation at the mall, you know, and then you laugh about after. And I realized that's what I was looking for, not speech therapy, but, and I did a note at the time, a support group. And the more that I got involved in a support group and I met others who stuttered with a positive attitude towards their stuttering, I soon learned, wow, stuttering is kind of cool to have. I know it, I know it's a very, abstract, absurd thing to say, but I soon realized how much I was benefiting from stuttering openly in my day job, in my social life, you know, how much I was fearing all my life to even tell people that I stuttered, how much shame it was involved in. But because I was learning, it wasn't my fault. It was nobody's fault. I just, I just do this. It's like saying, I'm ashamed I have hair on my head, you know? It's like, this is just what happens, right? Um, and then came the emails that said, how dare you say stuttering is cool? So yes, it was a pretty poor choice for a podcast, um, but it was my way of encouraging, um, you know, others who stutter, hey, give this a try, you know, stepping out of your comfort zone, you get such a rush and you feel so much better. And once people know that you stutter, they're perfectly okay with it, which, which totally flips upside down what happened in our childhoods, right? When we stutter, people laugh, no, the kids laughed at us. Adults don't really, not many adults do that. There might be one or two in every 100 that might, but that's reflected, a reflection on them, not us. Um, and I mean, just look at what happened during uh, Biden's um, uh, election campaign, right? How many you know people would make fun, but, you know, didn't it make fun? Made fun, right? Very, you know, the I don't know why I'm talking about grass when I have no scientific evidence, but long story short, yeah, so, uh, uh, more people are more uh, accepting. Um, so, so a question I have with, um, uh, with, uh, with that is, is uh, was, uh, that seems like it would be pretty hard, like, uh, like, 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 like the email saying, oh, well, um, stuttering isn't cool. Uh, like even, uh, even if the ratio is one to a hundred, uh, that uh, that has to like hit you and be like uh, uh like make you question um yeah. is, is this really the right thing to be doing yeah uh, um so 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 how did you uh, um how did you handle that and how did you like get um get over it sure okay so before we accidentally create a fake statistic uh, or fake news the one to a hundred was a ratio i just made up right now so <laughs> Maybe it's one in 7 million. So let's not, yeah. So whoever's watching this, don't start typing one in 100. <laughs> um, uh, you're asking, so how did I respond to those? Uh, yeah, actually mixed, mixed. Uh, it depends what came in. Um, I remember once someone wrote in, it was on behalf of her brother. She wrote, how dare you say my brother went through so much hardship and you're calling your podcast like this is blah, 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 blah. And then I would write back saying, you know, I'm very sorry about this, but here's why I call it stuttering is cool, or here's what I mean by it. Um, so I put that on my on the about page section of my website over at stutteringschool.com. Um, other times, um, like once I published my book, so I have a copy here, which later on, so I uh, published the 
stuttering is cool. That's when I got a bit more bolder. <laughs> the emails were a bit less, <laughs> yeah, the hate emails. Um, uh, once I started uh, promoting my book, so uh, long story short, for anyone who may not know, I have comics in my book as, as uh, well. And um, so I would post the comics and all these encouragement, positive notes and about stuttering and hey, you know, step out of your speaking comfort zone, just one small baby step and then you'll grow less fearful and more, you know, um, open about, hey, you know, I just happen to stutter, you know, you could still use your speech tools, you just don't have to beat yourself over stuttering. Um, uh, where I would hear from a friend saying, oh, hey, here's a screenshot of someone writing something along the lines of, when I come, no, I can't stand those stupid posts from the Stuttering School Facebook page because after a day of stuttering, I come home, it's like a slap in the face, seeing these positive messages. And that hit me hard. And I'm like, <laughs> I remember like, I don't get it. Nobody wants encouragement. Nobody wants, right? So that was that journey that I began to learn about um, how a lot of times uh, people want to be heard. They simply want to be heard. Um, uh, Eve, even my time with Stutter Social, which is an online support group uh, that we started in 2011 using group video chats, and um, it was through our hosts that I learned, yeah, they, some people, they just need to be heard. They just want to be heard. So it was a great learning experience. And, that, and then I ended up changing, revising the way that I message my thing. It wasn't grammatically correct. The way that I, uh, or the message, right? Because it's like, yeah, we want to be heard. We want people to know. We want fluent people to know what it's like to stutter. Because they don't know we're the only ones. So hence my eventual uh, launch of FrankieBanky.com. That's the name of this box. His name is Frankie Banky. A whole website uh, aimed at uh, fluent people for stuttering awareness, uh, aimed at SLPs, speech language pathologists, as resources in the, in the therapy room. Um, and for other people who stutter to, hey, you know, to, to, to um, you know, have some humor in the, in the shared experience of stuttering that I talk about in my uh, comics. I really went off on, an <laughs> on another tangent. Uh, um, uh, um, sorry, I, uh, I, was, I was thinking about interrupting you, but you're, um, you're just a really fascinating person to, uh, oh. um, to listen to. And, um, and, and I'm, I'm especially excited for this interview because, um, because usually on your podcast, then you're, um, you're the one interviewing someone else. Um, and so, um, and so, um, and so, so, so I think like the ratio uh, probably in your head is about like 20% you talking and then 80% mm. people talking. Um, and so it's really, really cool to see kind of the, the opposite of that and, and, and you actually like um, talking for a, uh, for a long time. Um, um, because like, uh, like during the podcast, I, uh, uh, during your podcast, I keep thinking, oh, I wish, um, I wish Daniela would just like cut off his guest and, um, and, and just like talk <laughs> Um, but, but, uh, I would but, be rude. Um, yeah, yeah, but, um, but, but you're, uh, you're a really, really nice guy that doesn't actually um, do, um, do that. So, um, so, so I really, um, I really, really like your approach and, um, and, um, and, and it's kind of like my approach for learning languages. And, um, and, and, and one of the things about me is I'm an, I mean, I'm an extremely visual learner. And most of the um, most of the um, language learning stuff are for people that are very very auditory he heavy. Uh, like like Pimsleur language is like for people that are 100% auditory, and the people um, people like me just totally hate Pimsleur because they don't have any like um, pictures or, or 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 even or even written out um, text. Wow. It's all an audio. It's all an, an audio thing. Um, so um, so. So any, um, anyway, I, I've um, I, I'm living in Thailand, and then Thai is a tonal language where where, where like different tones mean different mm -hmm. um, different things, and I'm I'm a pretty like analytical person, and then I also like to um, w whenever I'm learning something, I also like to think how can I teach this as I'm learning. So um, so so I'm taking kind of a really non-conventional way of learning um, Thai, and. 
Um, and then also like like my hobby is to teach English classes. So so sometimes after um, like a couple times a year after work for about a month, um, then I'll um, then I'll do an English class at my um, at my job. And oh, wow. um, and so and so I think a lot about language learning, and and I realize that my like like my approach to language learning is really really similar in a lot of ways to your um, to your approach with stuttering, um, but um, and 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 like one of the uh, one of the things that I. Um, uh, uh, one of the things that I said is when I'm when I'm learning something, then I'm also um, I, I'm also thinking about how to teach it, and and the way I would really love to learn Thai is to like teach a Thai class as I'm learning Thai. Um, so, mm. um, but um, but but the problem with that is uh, kind of the Thai learning community is just very very toxic, and oh. uh, and, and I've um, I've seen. Um, I've seen a few people just uh, um, trying that approach, and they just got absolutely butchered. Like, oh, um, you're, um, you're wrong here. You're wrong here. You're wrong here. You're wrong here. That's my childhood. Yeah. So, and so, kind of, um, um, kind of the traditional approach to learning Thai is that unless you're complete, completely perfect, then just forget about it. And um, and, and, and that's way, way different than my approach. Like, like I think, um, I think that approach is just really, really bad. Um, because uh, because that's just not how people learn. People uh, people like learn something, do it wrong, and then um, practice till they're uh, pr pr practice until they're good. But um, but as I've been learning about your approach, I I, I realized that your approach is uh, it, it is really similar to like like my approach to learning languages of of just kind of it, um, spend a lot more time embracing your wins than beating yourself up for uh, uh, for what's bad, and then um, and then and then put yourself out there. Um, whether, um, uh, like, like whether you think you can or or or, or not, um, I I don't know if that's a good way of like summarizing your uh, um, your approach to things, or or if I'm reading too much into it, or no um, no 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 I think think you're and, and, pretty accurate yeah and how did you um, how did you come up with that because um, because like um, like, uh, like you said and I've um, I've I, I've talked to I, I've talked to people that have stuttering that just really really don't like it and just. Are super super frustrated, and then, yeah. um, and then you're uh, um, you're um, you're you're kind of on the next level or whatever. Like, um, like um, yeah, like, I waltz right in and I say, "Don't worry." Yeah, it's not a good yeah. <laughs> uh, it's not a good thing for the people that don't. I, don't I, I mean, I I'm sure you were at that point at one point, and um, mm. and, and it's just kind of, it, it's probably a lot of uh, a lot of just like realizing a whole bunch of stuff like about psychology and a whole bunch of other stuff. So, so, um, so, um, so I'm just I, I'm just kind of wondering how, how you got from and, and you talked about it a little bit, but 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 like internally how you got from um, being like oh, I, I I hate my stuttering to um, um, to being um, to, to publishing a book and showing it um, showing it hey this is my yeah. this is my book stuttering is cool. Yeah, it all started with um, just needing to survive, right? I mean, if I want to get a girlfriend, if I want to make friends, if I want to get a job, if I have to answer the phone at work, participate in work, you know, be part of a conference call, answer the damn phone, <laughs> you know, uh, give a presentation, right? Um, I'm going to have to figure out do something about this because I can't keep hiding you know as a kid maybe I can get away with it but as an adult this doesn't jive it doesn't fly I'm not going to get anywhere um, you know if I want to travel right if I want to buy nice things <laughs> I'm going to have to get a nice job and if I'm going to have to ace the job interview right so that's why back in 2016 sorry 2006 uh, when I was you know, looking around for a speech therapist, you know, and I didn't realize that, oh, you don't have to be fluent, right? You don't need that perfect speech. You don't need all that stuff. Um, so that's where all that s stemmed from. And then taking steps out of, uh, just taking small steps out of my comfort zone, you know, just starting from, you know, uh, asking someone for the time or, uh, you know, stuttering openly when you give a coffee order, um, you know, saying, oh, I just stutter, right? And then, and I learned that the more I stepped out of my comfort zone, or like I said earlier, um, the less I would fear. So the next time it'll be less scary and then less scary and then less scary. And at the time I was attending podcasting conferences 
And the more that I told people about my podcast, uh, especially women, uh, they would look at me in a different light. You know, well, this guy's really confident. This guy's really awesome. And they tell other people, total contrast from when I was a kid, right? Hey, this guy, is, this guy talks funny. Let's make a fun of him, right? Completely, completely the opposite. And now, mind you, my experiences is different from everybody else's experiences. Uh, that other person, you know, who stutters standing right beside me, their experiences are different from mine. Different from this person standing on the other side of me is different. Everyone has a different experience with their stuttering, different feelings toward their stuttering, different stuttering volume, different, uh, you know, and it's not just stuttering, it's even their whole, whatever happened throughout their lives, because that shapes you, that shapes you. So I think I would say mine's was more of a CBT, I, I, I guess. Um, uh, I forget what it stands for. Oh, cognitive behavioral therapy. There, there you go. Or NLP. So basically positive thinking, you know, what's the worst case scenario? Is the sky going to fall on my head because I stuttered the mo 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 mochaccino and the, and the cash and the um, burst uh, snickered a bit? No, I get a bit of a bruised ego. I'm never going to see them again. Or if I do, I can, or I, or, or even know what happened at the post office the other day. It was the second time the lady there, because uh, she was asking, are you going to pay by debit or credit card? <clears throat> Excuse me. And I, and I always block on the word, credit. I go credit. And I kind of forgot that I was wearing a mask. So she can't tell that I'm stuttering. <laughs> so she would say, oh, did you forget? Or, oh, it took you a while to think of that. And I told her twice. I stutter. I speak with a stutter. That's why I keep coming back with all these packages of books because they're books about stuttering. But she sees thousands of people a day. So she's not going to remember the one person. Well, maybe she will, but <laughs> she's very busy. Uh, I lost my train of thought again. What was I saying? Um, uh, oh, yeah. Um, so from you know covert to overt and being more active also in the stuttering community. I got really active in the NSA, National Stuttering Association at their conferences, which is a big party. And over the years, since 2007, um, I met more and more people from around the world who stutter from all different parts of their journey. You know, from those who are very ashamed of their stuttering to those who are you know, very overt and talking in the news on the media about stuttering. Um, and what I love the most, is seeing uh, those who are really ashamed of their stuttering uh, and they grow into you know, these more overt uh, people who stutter uh, because of us people who are you know, encouraging them, hey, just make a, make a phone call. There's a great story that I remember a friend of mine where we'll say maybe 2009, um, you know, and this was on Twitter. So there was a thriving positive stuttering, like, like positive meaning when Twitter wasn't a nasty place, um, a very positive environment. There was a thriving uh, stuttering community there. And I remember this friend, she would say, no, I just make my mother make my phone calls for me. I will never make a phone call. And, um, and she was in the university years, so I guess in her 20s. And then just one day, she goes, I can't believe it. I made my first phone call and it was awesome. I stuttered and I didn't care and all that stuff. So that's why my book begins with um, Summer here. You are the company that you keep, <laughs> right? So it rubs off on, it, on you. So yeah, very long and simple question. Yeah, and um, so... So, um, so, so, so that's really interesting. And um, I actually had a friend who, um, um, I've, um, I've lost contact with him now, but, uh, but, but we met, uh, we met on some like online, um, online chat, um, um, chat boards. I, um, I have cluttering and he, um, he has stuttering and, and he, um, he asked, Hey, can I, um, Hey, Hey, can we have a phone call? And, and I, I hate phone calls. So, um, so we kept asking and kept asking. And then finally, yeah. uh, uh, finally we had this phone call. And I think his, I think his stutter is just very severe because the first, I think the first two phone calls I had with him, he didn't actually say anything. And I, and I wasn't, uh, well, I heard, I heard some sounds. So I, so I think he was trying to, 
um, I think he was trying to say something, um, but then, um, so, so, so I said, um, I said like, oh, hi, uh, like, like I talked for a couple minutes and then hung up. Um, and then, um, and then I was chatting with him and I'm like, um, and, and, and he said, oh, that, um, that was a really great experience. And I thought, oh wow, that's um, that's really really interesting because you didn't um, say anything. Um, but 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 I think for him, like just um, getting over the um, getting over the point of like having a phone call, um, even th um, even though he wasn't able to actually pronounce and or um, produce yeah. any any like um, words, um, was a really positive thing. Yeah, and chances are, I now ob now obviously I can't, I can't speak on his behalf and I can't read his mind, but chances are maybe. Uh, it was a great experience also because, you know, you, I'm assuming, didn't laugh at him, didn't try and fill in his sentences, like you gave him the time to speak. So, um, yeah, so that's to my point, right? Totally different experience between someone like me whose stutter became more moderate. I mean, it, it fluctuates depending, you know, on, uh, I guess, situation or whatever. Um, versus someone with a higher stuttering volume. Their experiences will be very different. Um, but it all boils down to your attitude or your, um, what your drive is, what your goals are, you know, uh, what you want out of the life. Um, yeah. Cool. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of wondering if, uh, well, actually, and let me, let me preface this by with cluttering, then cluttering is is really really often contrasted with stuttering. Yeah. Um, so um, so so like even on the Wikipedia, <clears throat> article, um, um, I think about half of the article is well, folks with cluttering do this, but folks with stuttering do this, and so um, and so um, so oh um, and um, anyway, that was supposed to be an introduction to could you give. <laughs> uh, um, could you give uh, um, could you give a really brief um, description of of stuttering be, um, because Ooh. it's interesting um, um, and and let me um, let me give my let me give my description of stuttering and then you can tell me um, what's uh, what what's wrong and right about it so um, okay. so, so so from my per, from my perspective as um, I'm coming from the perspective of cluttering is this but stuttering is this then stuttering is kind of two things um, one is that when you're thinking of a word then you just uh, then it just won't come out, um, and uh, um, and and very often with repeated uh, uh, with repeated sounds. Um, um, so, um, so that's uh, that's the main thing, like the stuttering disfluency. Um, and then the and then the second thing is is blocking, which is kind of um, kind of this mental uh, um, this mental barrier of that. Um, since since you know that that's going to happen, then then this kind of block thing happens where you. Um, where you, um, where, um, where, where you're so afraid or, 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 or so emotional about the stuttering coming up that it, it further disrupts your, your speech. So, um, so, so anyway, that, uh, that's, mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's my way of looking at stuttering is, is through kind of those two things of, of the stuttering disfluency and then blocking. But um, um, can you get, um, since, um, um, since, since I don't have stuttering, um, can you give a much better, um, yeah. Um, overview of what, um, uh, what and, and and the guy that told me about blocking um, said that, uh, and, and this was really fascinating to me. Um, he said the most uh, most speech therapy is getting you to stop blocking and start like actually stuttering because uh, um, because because the blocking is uh, kind of the defense mechanism that prevents you from or or or, or they, that you're trying to stop stuttering, but actually the best way to stop stuttering is to just um, push through and, and actually stutter. Um, so, so, so that's what this guy told me about it, but, but I don't know, I don't know, is that accurate or not, or, or what's... Um... Kind of, sort of, kind of, sort of. I'm going to first say I'm not the expert. So uh, just because I stutter doesn't mean I know everything about stuttering. That's why we have research, right? Because there was still researching. Um, blocking, uh, I'll first address your definition of blocking. It has nothing to do, stuttering is not caused by it doesn't develop because of emotions or my parents divorced when I was three oh, or uh, things no, no, like that. No, no, I'm, um, um, I'm, I'm saying that, I, I'm saying that, I, I'm saying that like, like the repeat, um, like there's kind of a rep, um, a repetition, uh, um, the, the repetition, yeah. like, like nobody knows what, what, what causes that. But then a lot of, a lot of people with stuttering, um, try to, um, try to stop that. 
uh, and um, and then it and then it comes out um, and then it comes out as a like a kind of secondary like kind of learned um, learned discipline. Yeah. Um, 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 so, um, um, so you're on the right track. You're on the right track. Let me. I'm just looking through my book because I do have an. Um, I do have a definition of stuttering that can, I don't know where it is. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, um, be, um, because I don't, um, I don't want to, um, I don't want to come across as saying that I, I know what the, um, what causes um, stuttering because I've, I've talked to enough, uh, enough folks with stuttering to know that, um, that I, I don't know and I don't think anyone else um, really knows. Yeah, it's, just that, yeah, this is going on the internet and there's so much, oh, here, there's so much misinformation. So let's not be part of the misinformation, right? And not that we're deliberately doing it. So I have, um, now my book is very artistic. So I actually wrote the definition around here. So you're gonna see me rotate my book, maybe. Um, uh, okay. Uh, uh, when you're about to say something you want to say, but for neurological reasons, your body won't let you say it for a few seconds or even as long as a few minutes. Stuttering can be in the form of re re repetitions, uh, prolongations, and or b b blocks, also known as gestural fixations. How's, how about that for a word? Um, we try to get control of our mouths. Uh, back, but our bodies just won't let us to accommodate. We move other body parts. Maybe that's what you're talking about, secondaries, like um, the blinking um, yeah, and, and the that. I do that. <laughs> uh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> and, um, and so, what's um, what 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 is blocking? Because I think I'm actually talking about something. I, I think oh, I'm actually okay. Blocking is like me at the post office example. Uh, she asked me, so are you going to pay? No, that'll be you know. $5.55, uh, you're gonna pay by debit or a credit card. And I would say, oh, I'm gonna pay by credit card. So I'm, so I'm blocking on uh, the C or, or as a friend of mine uh, whose name comes up very often in my book, Dr. Craig Snyder, he also stutters, he's, he uh, researches stuttering. Um, he says, I'm actually, uh, we're actually blocking on the R sound. So in the word credit, it'll be the R because we're already saying the C, but we're having trouble getting into the R. But in any case, uh, yeah, it, it would be like that, like that. So blocking pretty much, you just stop and okay. then, or pauses, I guess pauses is, is another word. So yeah. um, in other words, just general fixations. <laughs> You're fixated. Um, um, do you know what? Um, do you know what causes blocking? Nah, I wouldn't be the one to be able to answer okay. that. But yeah, um, best to check with a researcher. Um, just, what causes um, it? I really don't know. I mean, uh, if this helps for me in any ways, I never know what's going to happen every time I speak. Uh, whether it's going to be repetitions or blocking or prolongations, I know when it comes to words that begin with a letter E, especially, um, uh, I remember um, a long time, I had a hard time saying the name er Erica, like I am right now, where, where now that, now that was a block. Uh, that would take a long time for me to say. Um, like elephant would be another one, a word that I would always have issues with, a very long time blocking. Uh, but for me, it's always a surprise. <laughs> surprise, it'll be repetitions or surprise, it'll be fluent or surprise, it'll be, you know, whatever. Um, okay, so, um, so, so I think, yeah. so, so what I was trying to describe was something different than blocking. It was, it, oh. it, it was, more of a, it, it was more of a secondary behavior. So, um, so, so what I was trying to describe, um, um, just, um, just to make sure that I don't get like misquoted or whatever, um, <laughs> is, uh, is that it, it is kind of the phenomenon that, that like if you if you know that normally like when you say credit you would say credit ah yes and, yes, yes uh, right. and and you're and you're super super embarrassed about that and so you kind of stop yourself uh, um, that's yeah. uh, um, that's the phenomenon that I was yeah um, you're referring to what I understand is uh, speech tools so what you learn in speech therapy uh, I they call it uh, ooh. I think it's called fluency shaping. It's been a while since I've been involved. Um, 
it's things like uh, there's bouncing, um, mm -hmm. which is um, I'm trying to think. So um, bouncing is kind of like saying b -b 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 ball. If I remember correctly, don't quote me on this. Um, another one would be um, a credit card. So you're actually, um, again, I'm not the one. The best, the best person to interview, I highly recommend, is Evan Sherman. Uh, he's in us. And sorry to out you, <laughs> Evan, if you're watching this. Uh, he, yeah, he's fantastic at uh, the speech tools. Well, because he's a speech therapist. Um, uh, yeah, it's those techniques that you can that you can have as much control as you can. Not like the goal doesn't have to be fluency or hiding your stuttering. It's more like um, when you're in like a train wreck of a stutter. You know, you can still have that control. Uh, so when I'm saying credit, and if there's a long line of people behind me, everyone's angry and all that stuff, or maybe I don't even need to care what other people think. Actually, yeah, scratch what I just said. I don't, I don't have to care what other people think. So if I want to, you know, or maybe I'm giving a presentation, right? And I'm, and I'm really, you know, wanting, or it's a job interview, right? Because we don't know what the job interview is going to think, no matter what we say. So we can always say, hey you know, a credit card transaction came in and then I helped the customer fix it or, you know, whatever the answer would be in the job interview. Um, sorry, I lost my train of thought again. Um, it's, it's a way to, um, it's a way to still have, s to stutter gracefully versus not gracefully. And in fact, I have a great cartoon a great comic strip over at frankiebanky.com about voluntary stuttering, which is another technique where you stutter on purpose, even when you're not stuttering to help you gain that control. Sorry? Uh, that's one of my questions is, is uh, what is voluntary stuttering? Because I've, um, I've heard, um, I've heard you mention that on podcasts and, yeah. um, and, I, um, and I've seen that in the Frankie Banky comics, but, uh, but, but I really don't know what, what voluntary stuttering is. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great, um, it's a great technique that I was never taught. And you know, until I got active in the online stuttering community. And um, it's a great way to, uh, to stutter gracefully. Um, so again, Evan is the best person to talk to. Um, uh, and- so is, it kind of that, is it kind of that you stutter on purpose? Is that what voluntary stuttering is? Um, so, so, so like um, you-, you yeah, so um, you're you, stuttering you, on purpose. And so once a stutter does come, you're already prepared, you're already conditioned. It's kind of like an athlete who's always practicing, um, you know, their basketball shots or, you know, right? Because they're always in perfect form in preparing themselves when a stutter happens. Kind of like a soldier, I, I, I guess, right? When the stutter happens. Okay, so instead of credit, it could be more like, credit card and then at the same time you can even keep the eye contact right oh credit card oh did you forget I say no 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 oh i just speak with a stutter what can i do oh okay hey my brother used to stutter that's usually the conversation that happens they say oh yeah i knew someone who was stuttered yeah um i hope that helps it's kind of like um yeah, yeah. Devil is like also facing your fears constantly. <laughs> you're, you're speaking fears. Sorry, you were saying. Go ahead. Um, yeah, yeah. Especially comparing it to an athlete, and that you're like practicing. You're practicing stuttering so that you can stutter, um, stutter yeah. gracefully. Um, so, um, so, so, so that's uh, that's that, that's really interesting. And and it was probably really hard to. Um, try it first because because I'm guessing you're thinking well I, I don't want to stutter more I, I want to stutter less um, how is stuttering more going to um... it's like calling your podcast stuttering is cool <laughs> it's like it just it flips <laughs> everything upside down and there is there is quite the nuance to voluntary stuttering so I, I was actually working with my friend Greg that I mentioned on when I was creating the comic of saying am I explaining it correctly because it is quite a difficult um, concept or method to teach because there's a specific way of doing it um, on 
specific sounds. You know, you do it one way, you do it the other way. Um, it's been a while since I've read the comic, um, but I remember um, uh, I used uh, the analogy of ordering a pizza. So uh, you would say P, 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 pizza. And, you know, you can even throw in some humor there uh, and say, I'd like to order a PP pizza, <laughs> right? Like, um, and, all that, and all that stuff because humor brings people together. And, you know, we all know what else humor does, right? Makes us relaxed and, uh, you know, and everyone can be more, you know, like relaxed in a social way, I mean. Um, and yeah, I don't think I'm doing any justice with voluntary stuttering <laughs> or explaining all these concepts because I'm not a speech therapist, so. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and it makes um, it makes sense for me. And and you're um, um, like I said, you're, you're you're a fascinating person to because um, <laughs> I don't know anything. <laughs> so, um, so, so one of the uh, um, since you're um, um, since since now uh, since now your speech is really good. Um, uh, one of the questions that I have is: Does anyone ever say to you, "No, uh, no, Daniela, you you don't you don't stutter. Um, what you do is something else"? Uh, um, because uh, like, like that happens to me a few times, and, and I don't know if it's because um, people just don't know about cluttering or they don't like understand yeah. cluttering very well. Um, but uh, but that happens uh, that happens to me a lot. Like um, people saying, "No, no, you don't. Uh, you don't. Uh, there's nothing wrong with your speech. What uh, what what your problem is is, and they say something else." Uh, um, so yeah. so I'm wondering, um, does that ever happen with you? Lots of times, and I hate it <laughs> uh, because uh, a lot of time like, um, back when I first started learning, wow, you can benefit from stuttering and all that stuff. The stuff about the women find me more attractive because I was stuttering openly and all that stuff. Um, back then, just lost my train of thought again. Oh boy, don't turn forty. Your your brain goes mush. Um, oh, about people telling me, yeah. Um, yeah, it was actually uh, when we launched Stutter Social. So stuttersocial.com in case anyone's wondering. Um, when we first launched it, I'm like, hey, I get to hang out with others who stutter, this is awesome. But every so often would come someone saying, you know, great job, you didn't stutter then. And it drove me crazy. Cause here I am finally, after like three or four decades of stuttering, I can, or hiding my stutter, I could finally be open. And someone's saying, you know, <laughs> like, no, don't do that. And, um, you know, I try to avoid um, phrases like, I'm, uh, I'm speaking good, or, um, and this isn't a picking on a you thing. This is more of a culture, a whole a wholesale culture change uh, on the way that we perceive and talk about stuttering uh, and also cluttering as well, or any, or any difference whatsoever, whatever we're talking about, um, is that stuttering isn't good or bad. It just is, you know, that's a quote from, uh, again, my friend, Greg. Another one is from, was it Mitch Trishon, a co-founder of Stutter Social? He, he said something along the lines of, you know, much of what, much of, the experience of stuttering is our perception to, uh, to, uh, towards it. So it's more like my stuttering volume is a lot lower. You know, I just stutter less, I stutter more, right? Um, and in fact, Stama has an, has an excellent campaign going on where they talk about uh, changing the way that we talk about stuttering. Stama is um, uh, a campaign from the British Stammering Association. They call stuttering stammering there. Um, and it's a fantastic video. Just do a very quick, I mean, a Google search should, should come up uh, or search for the hashtag, it's how we talk. It's just the way that we talk, just like how you talk, the way that you talk. So it's not that you talk badly, it's that you clutter or some, so, so that's where the positivity comes, comes from. Cause we would never say someone in a wheelchair walks badly it doesn't make sense <laughs> you know like it doesn't like it's not like it's not their fault like it's like it's such a negative thing it's just i uh, use a wheelchair done you know uh you know you're the one that create the the barriers with all these stairs that i can't get to the restaurant that i want to get into <laughs> things like that now i yeah, really got on to another tangent that yeah 
<laughs> Sorry. That's, uh, uh, that's a good point. I, I really shouldn't use um, e um, the words either good or bad um, in um, in relation. But, but no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's like, like it wasn't a slag on you. It's really everybody. I mean, even speech therapists do that. It's just that now, like these times are coming. So like we're, we're being more inclusive or being more uh, aware and all that stuff. So yeah, that's, that's all. Yeah. So anyone who's watching this, your stuttering isn't bad. <laughs> It's just high or low, and you're still a good person with value, with value. <laughs> I get the feeling I'm going to get a lot of hate comments in this video. <laughs> so, um, so, so one of the uh, one of the things I really like about your podcast is um, your um, w w well, kind of two things. You're you're really really interested in each of in each of your guests. And um, and I can tell that um, ju just um, your your podcasts are just really awesome because uh, because you're um, uh, um, because you're always just um, ju just so so interested in people that you bring out a lot of interesting stuff and then also also I've noticed that your um, your voice um, and, and and I don't want to say your voice is good but just um, <laughs> after. <laughs> Um, after what you just said. Oh but, no, I just made you self-conscious. You, you have a really enjoyable voice to listen to. And, um, and that's something, uh, um, uh, that's something that I've, um, uh, that, um, that I've noticed like as I'm doing interviews is, is I'm trying to, uh, like I'm trying to figure out like what about my voice is, is cool and interesting to listen to. Uh, mm. like, like my little brother's a, a semi-famous YouTuber. Um, oh. and, um, and he's got, um, and he's got this really, really nice um, voice. Like, um, like, like people, people write, uh, uh, people write in the comments. I could listen to you read a phone book. Um, yeah. but, um, like, like he's got a nice voice like that, and um, and you do too. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm just wondering, like, have you always had a really nice voice, or did did you, um, did, um, did you practice, uh, um, did you practice practice it to become a like famous podcaster, or, or, or like. Um, um, mm -hmm. um, what uh, and and also what? Uh, why is your voice so um, so so good and just like <laughs> nice? <laughs> Thank you. Um, my voice, to be honest, never liked the sound of my voice. So I've been told that a few times by uh, people. One friend of mine, uh, she once wrote something like um, the sexiest stuttering voice <laughs> on the internet. I'm like, really? Um, yeah, I never, it comes to a surprise when people tell me things like that. Like, I'm like, really, my voice? I never, I never uh, ever imagined my voice was like a radio voice or anything like, uh, like that. I always daydream of having a radio show, but I thought I don't have that radio, radio voice. Some people have a fantastic voice for radio or for podcasting. So I still don't know what, why people tell me things like that. And I also have... Uh, and and, and mouth, theory, so let me drink. <laughs> so, so, so my theory, uh, my theory was that um, you, you told me once that you listened to a lot of NPR. So, um, so, so my theory in my head was that you had this like NPR, oh, uh, NPR guy that you were like, um, you were copying and that you've developed this really cool voice. There are, yeah, there are some, uh, it will be more CBC than NPR. CBC is our national broadcaster uh, uh -huh. here in uh, Canada. So yeah, there are at times, um, where, I mean, the way the brain works, right? It just throws thoughts at, you know, random thoughts have nothing to do with you. And a lot of times, <laughs> some of my, some of the hosts of podcasts that I listen to, they pop in my head and I start imitating them, which is very weird to do. Um, but going back to your point about uh, being interested in people, yeah, that's pretty much, yeah, you pretty much hit the nail on the head with that one I just can't help it but I'm very curious about things in the world including how other people like about other people you know for example finding out that you live in Thailand and go oh I wonder what what brought him to Thailand uh, you know is it because of this is it this is it travel is it this? you know it's things like that or why would he start a podcast <laughs> like that's just the way my brain brain uh, works so when someone comes on to my show I go wow what's it like to be a pilot you know, you stutter, who cares about your stuttering? What's it like to be a pilot? Or, you know, what's it like to, you know, live in Thailand? Or what's it like to be a teacher that stutters? All those kids, you know, looking at you, do, do you ever get like a lot of different thoughts come in my head <laughs> at, at the same time? Um, I think it's, um, yeah. I think it's awesome because I've, um, I've, I, I've read pretty much everything that I can get my hands on with, uh, with cluttering. And in your, um, I, um, I've, 
Um, I listened to um, um, the two podcast, two of your podcasts with um, uh, th that were about cluttering, and you raised a lot of uh, of questions that I've just never um, I've never heard before. Um, oh, even wow. even though I've like read as much as I I, I, I can, and I try to get exposed to like um, anything um, anything new about um, cluttering. So uh, so so. Uh, so, 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 so I, I just think that your whole process, uh, your whole process is really, really interesting. Yeah, oh, and, and, um, and speaking, um, and speaking of, um, I've noticed that you have a really hard forty-minute um, time cut off on all of your um, podcasts. <laughs> is not really. Mm -hmm. To be um, honest, it's 20 minutes. <laughs> My podcast started out at being at being 10 minutes, uh, okay. but I can never. I can never make it because the conversations keep flowing. And a lot of times they're like 40 to 50 to something clocking over an hour. I really try to make it short, especially now. A lot of podcasts now are over an hour, right? Uh -huh. And and I and I tend to be mindful, okay, what else are my listeners listening to? Because there are a lot of stuttering podcasts now <laughs> out there, and they're all an hour. Um, and I just think um, and even other topics other podcasts but other topics they're always around I noticed they they or at least the ones that I listen to they tend to be around the 40 minute mark if they're not traditional radio shows um mm -hmm. so yeah they just happen that way to be honest I try to keep it 20 but I know it's futile because I think natural conversation happens in something like 40 minute chunks, completely unscientific. I didn't do any research or anything like that. I, it's just something that I ob observed. I could be wrong, could be just a coincidence, could be just a stuttering. Maybe it really is 20 minutes. It's just because the stuttering, we pushed it to 40, who knows? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, um, and, and that's, a, uh, that's a cool answer that you're, um, that, that you're trying to make it just really nice for your, uh, for your listener to be able to like listen to you and then listen to someone, um, someone else without having to um, like dedicate their whole afternoon. So, uh, um, um, so, that, so that's cool that you're focusing on your listener. Um, so, Which is so another reason why my episodes don't come out every week. It's like there's <laughs> thousands of other stuttering episodes people have to catch up on. So, <laughs> go ahead. Um, <laughs> you were so, saying. So, so, so in your um, in your in your podcast, then you have you have the podcast, and then you, um, and and you record kind of an intro before. Uh, um, mm -hmm. Before then, um, I noticed on on one of the on one of the podcasts that I listened to, you were um, it sounded like you were walking in the woods or something, um, <laughs> and, um, and 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 I was wondering, uh, like uh, like for me then, like like sometimes walking helps me to like pace my speech. Um, oh. so, so I don't um, I don't know if um, I don't know if you actually were walking in the woods or or if it, it just sounded like that or or <laughs> or. Uh, or it piped in some sound effects. <laughs> no. yeah. Um, so yeah, so there's that question I've never been asked before. Did I walk in the woods to pace my speech? Uh, these days I don't, I don't use speech tools. Like in general, the only times I do are times when I decide to myself, now is not the time to stutter. Let me just, you know, say what I need to say. And that's very rare. Things mm -hmm. like in a job interview, for example, where it's vital like I know it sounds a bit uh like am I hiding my stuttering not really because my resume is full of stuttering stuff <laughs> and I even tell them hey I stutter and here's and my work the work I do is in digital so my stuttering work that I do are my samples that I mention in the job interview um you know so sometimes there's a time pressure or whatever um but actually actually you know it's been a long time since I've used a speech tool now that I think of it, very I would say maybe 2018 is probably the last time I used a speech tool. Uh, okay. Although I could probably attribute that more to the pandemic. Um, but uh, sorry, where were we getting? Oh, oh, all right, the walking in the woods. No, that was more. Um, that was more harking back to the early days of podcasting, where I'm not sure if they. I'm assuming they probably still do it, but I haven't heard the term in a long time, mostly because. Um, I'm not very active, as active in the podcasting community as, as the early days. Um, uh, they called it uh, sound scene tours. So uh, back in, we'll say 2007, uh, back around that era in the early days of podcasting where, you know, someone would actually 
bring you on a sound like on like on an audio tour of you know Amsterdam. You know, hey, so right now I'm approaching this building and it looks like this, and and you can hear you know the sounds around you, so you feel like you're you're uh, there. So I've done episodes like that where I reported from the the NSA conference, or I reported from. I remember once downtown Toronto there was a disability. Uh, like an open air disability festival, I guess. So you could hear the music in the background. So you feel like you're there. So the next best thing is me walking in the woods. <laughs> um, and it also gives um, uh, more of a, what's the word I'm looking for? Here's the sounds of where I live. You know, here's the sounds of, uh, here's a park right next door or, um, uh, or next door to where I live or near where I live. And here's, oh, have you ever heard Canadian geese before? Where here's about a hundred of them, you know, sitting in a pond right behind me or things like that. I, I try to do those a lot more, but travel is pretty restricted right now. <laughs> so I can't really. Um, and they were a lot of fun to do. Uh, a lot of work to do, a lot of um, interrupting people at stuttering conferences. Say, hey, would you mind if we recorded something? Um, a lot of mindful of copyright music blaring from the bars into my show and then I get sued. So uh, I'm thinking I'm, th I'm thinking about it. Um, what I'm doing more now, or rather what I can do is um, I can experiment now with, with my Frankie Banky website because uh, I also start a Frankie Banky podcast where I describe my comics. So maybe in the future, I'll put in sound effects and uh, such. Uh, it all depends on life, <laughs> life, busyness, and all that stuff. Cool. And um, I had a question about Frank, um, Frankie Banky. Um, so, so your Frankie Banky comics are really and, um, Thank you. and I'm, um, I'm wondering how much, um, how much is Frankie Banky like you? And, and are there any ways that Frankie Banky is mm. different than you are? Oh, he's 100% me, yeah. Uh, a lot, a lot of that is um, the fact that I never really sat down and fleshed out characters. Um, you know, kind of like how you know Stephen King or any other author or you know uh, cartoonist would sit down. Okay, let me create a cast of characters. Here's their different personality types. I just drew, a based on my experiences. Um, and and in fact, a few friends of mine uh, had told me. Uh, because I recently posted a cartoon, cartoon, <laughs> I, use, I use air quotes a lot, um, like a draw tune of Frankie Banky uh, dressed up as King George VI giving his radio speech, but it's an encouragement speech to people who stutter. Um, and uh, so I had to ask a friend of mine uh, who is an actor who stutters, uh, you, you may have come across his amazing, amazing stuttering awareness videos on TikTok. He's Mark Winsky, spelled with a C, Mark. Um, and so a few friends of mine said, oh, I would always imagine Frankie Banky with your voice because he's you. <laughs> so even though I never really um, intended him to be me, it's not really autobiographical, um, but I just draw and write stories according to what I know. I just do it, you know, even in the past, I've had other characters before uh, Frankie Banky came or uh, Brown had a character from the dark side of the moon. Um, his name is Spud. And again, it would always be um, kind of a reflection of me, even though he's not me, <laughs> uh, more of a combination of, you know, my experiences, other comics that I've drawn, or I read other TV shows that I like, put all those personalities into one, that kind of a humor. So there's a lot of influ influ influences, but I am currently taking the time to develop a certain personality in all of my characters, especially now that I'm looking at creating a graphic novel of other characters, an SOP who stutters, a woman who stutters, uh, you know, what uh, have you, having, you know, someone who stutters, who's, uh, who doesn't have a positive or, or, or who's very frustrated with their stuttering, they'd rather be, uh, be uh, flu fluent, things like, uh, like uh, that. But I do admit, 
that's not my style. My style is humor. <laughs> my style is Looney Tunes type. So everybody, all of my all of my characters tend to be that you know Looney Tunes type. <laughs> you know, uh, you know Calvin and Hobbes, but I wouldn't say my art skills are the same as Calvin and Hobbes. Um, you know, Peanuts, uh, that kind. So there's yeah, so I'm so I'm working on uh, that's going to take some time. <laughs> and um, another question I have is. Um, have, um, have, have you ever been uh, like, like out in public somewhere and you see someone who has stuttering, um, and, and have you ever walked up to them and said, Hey, um, uh, I, I stutter also, uh, I um, chuckle. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, uh, um, and, uh, well, I, 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 I'll listen to your answer first and, and, um, Kind of the reason I'm asking that question is with uh, with cluttering uh, because cluttering awareness, is, um, especially with uh, folks with cluttering, is just super super low. Then I've, yeah. I I've ne I would never do that. And uh, um, 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 but anyway, um, um, uh, let me um, let me hear your answer first, and I'll give you yeah. background. The, <laughs> the re the reason that I chuckle is because you brought back uh, <laughs> a funny memory of the early days of my podcast. And, you know, I've mentioned being all, you know, suddenly I'm all positive about my stuttering and getting active in the stuttering community. And back then there wasn't much stuttering awareness. So when you met someone else who stuttered, it was monumental, right? Because before the internet, so we'll say before, you know, before Facebook and social media and all that stuff, it, it tend to be difficult to meet others who stutter in your immediate geographical area. For the most part, we keep hiding it. <laughs> you know, we keep passing ourselves off as we're not people who stutter. Stutter. We don't stutter. Um, so during that, those early days, um, I, re, I, re, I remember maybe one or two times, but there was one time I remember I was in a book, a tiny bookstore, and uh, I was just browsed, browsing around. And uh, one of the store, the people in the store, the people working in the store, the shopkeepers, uh, you know, he approached me and said, Oh, is there anything that I can help you with? And he clearly stuttered. You know, the eye blinking, the head movement, the repetitions, everything was there. And, you know, during our conversation, oh, no, I'm just here browsing around thinking, okay, well, if you have any, you know, need for any, any questions, please give me a call. And the entire time I kept thinking, oh my God, it's so cool. I just met another person who stutters. And, oh, I know. And I really wanted to bring it up and, and say, did you hear about the NSA? Did you hear, hey, I have a podcast about stuttering this. Oh, this is awesome, right? Because he's like, hey, kinship, right? It's like going to another country and then you meet another person from your same town, right? Um, mm -hmm. But I was very aware of, you know, I have no idea if he's okay with his stuttering, you know, because we're in such a small bookstore that his coworkers can overhear. Uh, you no, know, does he want to be, um, you know, identified as someone who's like, does like, like would that because this is everybody in the store hearing our conversation other customers and all of that's that stuff so that happened a few times um in other places uh again uh it's been a long time <laughs> maybe since 2009 maybe since that happened like i think that person's another time i remember i was doing an informational interview which is a great way to network, professional network, you know, when you want to get into uh, a certain field uh, for your work or, you know, or if you want to learn more about a company, you know, would this be a great fit for me to work at uh, and build up your network? Um, and, uh, and you build up the people that know you. So when there's a job opening, they can, you know, put your resume forward directly to the hiring manager without, you know, so you so so you can stand out from the stack of, of other resumes that come in. Uh, so that's a tip. <laughs> um, and I remember throughout the interview, like I'm going, but I think this guy stutters. But how do I ask, right? Because are they like are they trying to hide their stuttering? Are they trying to work on their fluency? Are they more like would it hurt? Like would it make them uh, depressed for the rest of the day if they're caught stuttering? Uh, things like that. Because I've been through that. So at the end, after I said, you know what, I'm going to ask. <laughs> so I tried, I said, Cap, you know, let's see what happens, right? Uh, it's probably a little bit mean to do. But um, at first he was taken aback. He goes, yeah, I, I started, because I, I asked, I think I, th I think I remember asking, 
by the way, do you stutter? I kind of noticed you said, do you stutter? And he kind of looked like he was like, yeah, like the, resp- like the reaction was kind of like, so what's it to you? <laughs> Something like that, you know? And I said, oh, but I stutter too. And then came a nice conversation about, uh, you know, oh, I'm very active in the King Stuttering Association. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, I would love to help out this and this. So um, there's always good that can come out of it, you know? Um, from asking, oh, do you do you happen to stutter? But yeah, I agree with you. It's a very like hard thing to know what to do. Uh, do you say something? Do you not? Um, yeah, actually, there was one time I remember, and, and, then, and then we'll go back to the interview. This is definitely a tangent. It, where were we? Was it Washington D.C. at the NSA conference? And word got out. That one of the one of the hotel members at the bar stuttered, and because he asked, like, "What kind of a conference is this? Everyone's talking like me. What is this? Oh, it's the NSA conference. You uh, should take the day off and join us <laughs> and all that stuff." So yeah, it was cool <laughs> that eight hundred people who stuttered showed up at his job. <laughs> Oh, that's uh, that's awesome. Yeah, uh, yeah. For um, for me, because uh, because cluttering awareness is so low, and most uh, most people that have cluttering don't um, know don't realize their speech is is different than anyone else's. That's right. Um, then uh, uh, then because of that, when I uh, when I meet someone with when I meet someone with cluttering, then I always want to talk to them, but I'm pretty sure they don't realize their um, they, they don't realize how they sound. So I don't ah. want to be um, I don't want to be the one that's right. on them. Uh, especially because like, um, like, like it was, um, I, um, I learned about, um, I learned about cluttering when I went to speech therapy. Um, and, and it was kind of, um, even though it was a like nice, friendly, controlled environment, when the speech therapist pressed play on the, um, on the tape recorder, and I heard my voice for the first time, um, mm-hmm. and, and it was a really bad, uh, well, you said, don't call, don't call, don't call, bad but it, but it was an actually extreme... you could say whatever you feel is uh, right so um so i tend to refrain but you're free to do what you want to oh, uh, um, okay so, um, so, so if so, you want to say it's bad it's bad <laughs> um, so, um, so, so so they'd record they're, they'd recorded me probably for about three hours and they and they picked, wow uh, uh, as part of the diagnostics and the, and they picked probably the uh, the most disfluent um mm. of my of my speech and and they pressed play and said, "Hey, um, listen, to, listen to your speech." Um, and uh, um, and and for me, that was really really traumatic. Um, hopefully, hopefully yeah. now speech therapists are a little bit um, nicer with, uh, with 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 cluttering and have um, kind of ease um, ease you into, "Oh, this is this is how your speech uh, actually sounds." But uh, um, but but anyway, I um, I um, I'd just be worried that if I um, approach somebody that didn't know about their speech, um, um, I, I, um, I would give them like a bad experience or a kind of bad experience like I did. So, so I would never want to yeah. like, like, like do that. Um, and then, um, and, and then I've, I've, I've also met people with stuttering that, um, that I've wanted to talk about it, but, but, but also, um, I'll, um, also just because cluttering, um, because cluttering awareness is so low in the general population, I don't want someone with stuttering to think that I'm making fun of them. Um, yeah, um, that too. For me to say, oh, hey, um, you, you have stuttering. I have something almost exactly like yours, except for mine's called cluttering. Um, and and then they're listening to me and like, is this guy making fun of me? Because I've never heard of cluttering. And, uh, <laughs> so so I, um, yeah. I, I, I just don't want to get beaten up. Um, so so that, <laughs> uh, that's why I've never had a, a conversation with like a random person. Well, you're living in Thailand. You can join some uh, Thai boxing, uh, <laughs> some Muay Thai camps there and learn. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It must be, it must be harder. Yeah, in the cluttering community because like, well, yeah, when you don't even realize what's this guy talking about and now you're changing someone's life, <laughs> you know, just out of nowhere, you know? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I'm safely assuming that the cluttering, the clutter sphere, the cluttering community is where the stuttering community was back when I started my podcast. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds, um, it sounds, it sounds like it. Yeah, and and it's great to see where you know you're starting this podcast, um, and it looks like it's going to go fast because everyone's on the internet now. 
<laughs> you know, so so you so you have an advantage there. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, it's 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 really um, it's really interesting, and I think that um, I think that with cluttering that um, that it's something that probably everyone can relate to because um, um, mm -hmm. because cluttering. Um, well, like one of the um, one of the ways one of my ways of being able to tell if someone has cluttering or not is is everyone everyone re repeats words just as part mm -hmm. of like normal um, just as part of normal speech. So mm -hmm. so like the phrase I want to go to the store, then most uh, um, a lot of like fluent spe speakers would say I I want to go to the store. Uh, that's that's very fluent, even though they're repeating the word I um, and and then sometimes, um, sometimes fluent speakers repeat a word three times. So, so a fluent speaker might say, "I, I, I want to go to the store." So, um, so, so that's still very, very fluent speech. Um, but then, as soon as you cross the point of four repetitions, where you say, "I, I, I want to go to the store," oh. then, uh, um, then that's uh, um, that's basically kind of the threshold of cluttering because uh, fluent speakers never actually repeat the same word. Um, for uh, four or more times, where so, where someone was cluttering, um, like um, like I do, um, I um, I think pretty much daily I say four words in a row, even um, even though I try to um, work on my speech, so I'm not saying I I I I I I I. I, 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 I um, and <clears throat> like, um, like and I do you to. can't tell if you're saying it more than four times? Um, well, what time? And you're never aware that you're saying it four, oh, five um, times, so, six times. Um, so, so, so the thing is, um, now, now I'm really aware of my speech, and what, uh, one of the things they taught me uh, in speech therapy is self monitoring. So, um, uh, so, so the, um, um, I think the reason that um, uh, the reason that not being aware is such a big thing is is um, Dessa Weiss. He's the guy that wrote the book on cluttering in like 1960. And and for a while that was um, for for like forty years or uh, for forty years that was like the only book on cluttering, um, uh, even, uh, even though there there have always been like technical articles on it. So uh, so so in um, in his definition, um, his definition of cluttering was that people with cluttering um, aren't aware about their cluttering, and mm. um, and that um, that was true in 1960 because uh, because. There wasn't the internet. You had to probably you, you had to probably travel like twelve hours to get to a speech therapist that knew it that, that even had had heard about cluttering before. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, and so, um, and so, uh, um, back then, uh, back then, people just didn't have uh, didn't have awareness. But, uh, but, but, but in speech therapy, one of the first things that they taught me is how to self monitor. So basically, uh, um, that means that as I'm talking, that I'm kind of listening to myself as I'm talking. Um, and and that wasn't um, and that's a skill that I have now. So I uh, so I'm very very aware of wow. um, especially if I click into self monitoring mode, um, like like I'm I'm able to hear all of my repetitions and everything like that. So so um, so so and I think that um, that that lack of awareness is kind of a um, I, I'm not really sure how to describe it. Like like. Um, like, uh, like, like, I think it's kind of a, a dead end, um, mostly because most uh, most people aren't aware of their speech. Uh, like, uh, like you're um, you're probably aware of your speech because you probably listen to your uh, um, listen to your podcasts. Um, and, and I know when I do this, <laughs> when I suddenly can't see, <laughs> when I shut yeah. my eyes. And <laughs> yeah, and um, and so um, and so. Um, but but most people uh, most people actually aren't aware of their own speech, and so mm -hmm. and so I think um, I think it's kind of unfair to say that folks with cluttering are unaware of their speech because like ninety nine percent of everyone isn't aware of their speech. Mm -hmm. um, the the only people that are aware of their speech are uh, folks with stuttering, speech language pathologists, public speakers, movie stars. Like um, um, like, like like it's only a, like one percent of everyone that is mm -hmm. actually aware of their. Uh, like has, has reached this level oh, I see. Of, of enlightenment. Um, everyone else is everyone else is clueless about their speech, but it's only folks with cluttering like me that um, that uh, um, that have disfluencies that are at a high enough level that disrupt their speech that um, uh, um, um, to where it can be a speech a, a speech disorder that um, that 
that it's kind of like weird or interesting, like, oh, well, um, he, yeah. he's, he's this bad and he doesn't realize it. Um, but yeah. but it could be it, it could be anyone like like your next um, your next door neighbor is probably less aware of their speech than uh, um, than or, or, yeah. or um, so 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 anyway um, that's that's kind of my rant on um, awareness about yeah. Um, about speech. yeah but I wouldn't say that it's uh, I forget the term you use uh, so correct me if I'm wrong I think you were saying um, there's probably no use in spreading clearing awareness if people don't realize. That they may be cluttering, um, you know, initiatives like your oops, and I just banged my computer. <laughs> initiatives like your um, uh, video podcast um, can help others who already realize that they're cl that they're cluttering, and then you create that support group, that support group feel. Um, uh, I mean, I'm not sure if you know, like, if it's uh, the same in the cluttering world, but for the for the stunning world, oh yes, we need that support. <laughs> Having those other friends that experience that same unique thing, and oh wow, you did those tricks too, trying to pass off as fluent, and you try to use this, you know, change your name and <laughs> describe the city where you lived in instead of saying it, <laughs> you know, or things like yeah, that. yeah. And I think uh, um, I think one thing with I think one thing with cluttering is that um, because there's because there's not a really big community of folks with cluttering, and and one of the reasons, um, one of the reasons that I, um, one of the reasons that I'm trying to talk a lot about it, is that a lot of the stuff out there with cluttering is written by speech pathologists or technical researchers, mm -hmm. and that, that that stuff. And I don't know if you've ever read uh, like a tech, um, very many technical document or um, technical like university articles on. On stuttering, but though, uh, but but with cluttering, they're just really, yeah. really um, and, um, and and like after um, after reading through an, an article, I feel like oh, I I need to like eat a quart of ice cream now to like get myself back to my happy wow. place. Um, yeah, um, yeah, and um, and so um, and so a lot of this uh, um, because um, because if you're um, if you're a university professor talking to another university pro professor, you, you're you're kind of detached from the humanity of of the whole thing. Like like even if you're accurately describing, yeah. It. Um, and so um, it and becomes so the something that's, um, some, something that's missing with cluttering is like the human approach to it. Saying um, and, and I notice uh, like a lot of people that are like freshly diagnosed with cluttering or, or realize it are are just really sad and depressed and. Um, and or, 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 or they come across that way, like oh, I'm, uh, um, and 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 that's that's not where I am. I'm I'm totally um, I'm totally fine. Um, I'm, to, I'm totally fine with it, and I and I don't think um, I don't think I'm sad and depressed about my speech. Uh, like like there's some there's some things that I don't like, but um, but but I uh, I just I just want to give a lot more like positive, happy like. Um, um digestible information mm -hmm. about cluttering than um, um than some of the, uh, the, the some of these scholarly papers that uh, that are just very very depressing for me to read yeah that's the uh i wonder if what you're running into is the medical model versus social model of disability um huh. and, and i have if, if um, you've run into yeah. Um, could you talk about could you talk about that because because that sounds interesting but I haven't heard about that before. Yeah, medical model. Um, uh, again, I'm not the the perfect person to be giving a here's here's the definition. Medical model is, for example, we must cure stuttering. Here are the speech tools. Be fluent. Keep practicing, and one day you'll be fluent. Uh, fluent. <laughs> a social model is more uh, what my podcast, my book, my attitude is more like, oh, it's just something that I do, right? Let's, let's uh, work together on the emotions. Um, you know, so in speech therapy sessions, you know, you would have, oh, so you have a speech that you have to give at school and you're really worried about stuff. Okay, well, let's, let's address your emotions and let's work on that. Uh, so you're using your speech tools, not as a way to get rid of your stuttering, but as a way to you know, control your, your, your speech biology and all that stuff. So you're addressing the emotions and uh, going back to, you know, you don't say your stuttering is bad. You would say, oh, okay, I stuttered a lot. Um, or 
um, you know, that barista, when I ordered my coffee, she snickered. Uh, it made me feel bad. Okay, well, let's address that. You know, oh, cool. I just stuttered. Uh, yeah, it sounds funny, but can I get extra sugar with that coffee? Thanks. <laughs> right? Or things like that. So it's more social. Um, it's kind of like, um, you know, uh, how inclusive we're be becoming now. Uh, let's remove the barriers. Let's have more understanding. Um, it's just the way I talk, right? Like it, it takes a lot of energy to try and speak fluently. It takes a lot of energy to even speak for more than 20 minutes uh, sometimes. Um, yeah, that's my very, very unscientific <laughs> definition of social. It's, it comes from the social model of disability and the medical model of disability. And uh, if, and then if you don't mind me plugging uh, the Joint World Congress on Stuttering and Cluttering, which I'm co-organizing. Um, so our one of our goals is to bring together both the academic, the researchers, people who clutter, people who stutter, and share each other's stories. Because, you know, your point being, you know, it's SOPs, you know, writing stuff without, you know, the people who stutter, the people who clutter just talking about the technical stuff, the mechanics, not the, hey, this is why our emotions, right, fuel the stuttering because we're being laughed at. We're being, you know, demoted. We're losing our jobs because people don't understand that stuttering doesn't mean, you know, low intelligence or we're lying or we're scared and nervous, right? It's, it's, thing, it's things like that, yeah. Cool and uh, and thanks for uh, thanks for plugging the World Congress on. Uh, um, <laughs> uh, what's what what's the official name again? The Joint World Congress on Stuttering, Stuttering and Cluttering. And Cluttering. So jwcsc.org is the website, <laughs> and that's taking place uh, July. I should know this. Uh, twenty second or twenty first. It's yeah. I have a I, ha, I have a visual memory, and it's been photoshopped a bit. So twenty first. Well, it's yeah. So twenty first, I believe it is to the twenty fifth of uh, July, taking place right now in Montreal. We're hoping. Uh, so uh, there's COVID going on. So, um. We're hoping we can still take place there. If not, we're going to make that fateful decision. But for now, our speaking, uh, our open call for speakers is uh, is open, and we want to hear from, um, you know, again, not just the academics and people who are doing research, and from you know SLPs, but we also want to hear from people who clutter and people who stutter, uh, regular people, regular folk. We because um, this is your chance. Um, to share, you know, to, to teach these academics and, the, and these SOPs and these researchers, hey, here's what we want, here's, how, here's what it's like to stutter, because they don't know what, it, what it's like to stutter, except the ones who do stutter and for the for the fluent ones, we are a, uh, what's what I'm looking for? Uh, we are a wealth of information. We are a wealth of information about stuttering and uh, about the stuttering and the cluttering experience. Cool, cool. That's uh, that's awesome. And I think we're um, I think we're probably out of time. We've uh, we, uh, we've definitely uh, we've definitely went over your twenty minute mark, and we've de definitely holy mackerel, an hour and a half. <laughs> your forty minutes hard, hard cut off. <laughs> and, um, and and usually mine um, usually mine go a little bit um, a little bit longer than um, than yours do, um, but um, so um, so 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 thanks uh, thanks very much for this uh, this extended interview because um, you said you said just a, a lot of really really cool interesting stuff and it's really um, it's really great to it's really great to talk to you um, your um, your podcasts are your podcasts are great but it's also great to see your face. Um, oh, too. thank you. Uh, uh, <laughs> so thanks uh, thanks for doing this and. Um, is is there anything that we is there any, is there anything that we um, before before I um, before we end uh, is there anything else that you want to talk about or that we didn't um, talk about that you wanted to talk about? Um, nope, nope. Everything I said was there. Stutteringschool.com, FrankieBanky.com, StutterSocial.com, <laughs> JWCSC.org. <laughs> There's a lot of links to the links there. <laughs> 
cool. And I'll um, and I'll try and put all of those links in the um, description of the YouTube. Okay, uh, great. <laughs> uh, um, so thank you, um, thank you very very much. Thank you.